Hey friends, welcome to my third video on the Bloomberg assessment test and in this video I'm going to take you through uh, some advanced uh, derivative theories and how to uh, study derivatives for the Bloomberg assessment test. Uh, this is Shivgan Joshi and you can check out the PowerPoint on my blog. So what I plan to do in this video is to introduce you to all terms that are used in derivatives uh, introduce you towards some of the instruments some of the advanced concept though my intention here is not to teach you in details about these uh, instruments but to just get you acquainted with the names and give you some basic idea about how things go now in the Bloomberg assessment test you won't be asked too much quantitative part because uh, you won't have too much time to do those long questions so you should know about all the instruments you should know about how to take decisions based on instruments and just find out whether something is overpriced or underpriced or if there is an anomaly or if there is a chance of arbitrage to earn money and things like that so you need to know uh, how these instruments work but you don't need to calculate all these things so uh, you you need to know a little bit of put call some of the strategies which uh, there are spreads, beer spread, bull spread, strangle, straddle and there are some of the exotic options then there is a new thing in market which is uh, which is very famous uh, in the current scenario that's volatility trading you need to have a little bit idea about what that means what do volatility index means and things like that and uh, a little idea about ETFs based on these things like call writing or uh, on volatilities okay let's get to it before that let me dis uh, put out this disclaimer that uh, all the content, all the PDFs uh, that I am referring are copyrighted to Bloomberg. This video is intended to learn, research and report about that. Now I don't represent Bloomberg Institute nor I am an authorized trainer uh, by Bloomberg Institute and I don't claim or guarantee accuracy of the information that I'll be sharing. Now I've cleared this exam with a 70% score. I've cleared FRM and CFA level 1 been teaching about GRE and GMAT and making these videos on GRE and GMAT and this is an extension uh, for my videos to Bloomberg assessment test let's get to it now uh, basically a call option and a put option you might be knowing these things the second thing that you need to understand is put call parity which means that there is a parity or an equilibrium in the market that keeps uh, the prices of put and call at a particular value and uh, it's like buying a call and buying a bond is equal to uh, like shorting a, a the stock and buying a put and something like that so there's a put call parity you can get the details uh, from Wikipedia and you can see the derivation then there are some strategies to earn money by using put call and uh, kind of limit your loss and gains like uh, beer spread, bull spread, strangle, straddle you need to have a little idea about those things so there are some strategies now in the exam you won't be asked about how or what do these strategies mean they'll give you a strategy give you all what is required and you need to predict what's happening so you don't need to memorize anything but if you go through these strategies once it becomes quite easier because you will get the same information, the same info, the same detail, prices, everything uh, and uh, you'll have to just comprehend that so if you read about strategies it becomes a lot easier to understand and read it again one more time in the exam then we have option Greeks which means that how the value of call and put de uh, depends on time, volatility, on the underlying price and things like that how sensitive they are and how they are going to move so that's option Greeks then we have the Black-Scholes which is one of the uh, most important formula in the derivatives you can check out that uh, you don't need to understand the derivation or anything you just need to understand what it is assume what are the inputs it is taking and things like that okay so that was about uh, a little bit about what all ideas uh, you need to know there are some terms that uh, you need to make yourself aware of that's implied volatility now implied volatility means the volatility which is calculated using the market price of the put and call we put all these prices in the Black-Scholes model and we try to find out a volatility of 
that is used to calculate these prices so we are reverse engineering uh, to get that volatility using the black scholes model then we have the binomial tree it's a most basic way to price an option it is a kind of a tree which tells that there is a 50% probability that a stock might go to this value 50% probability that it will fall down to this value and depending on that you have to find out what price of the stock would be and minus you have to subtract that uh, from the current price of course the present value of that thing with the current price so you are making a tree you're finding out what all prices could be in the future and uh, then you're fighting out an average of those prices or when you are multiplying that again you are getting again to a kind of an average thing then you are bringing it to the present value and you're using that to find out the price of an option then we have exotic option which are a little tricky like uh, the right to buy a call which are compound option which is a very simple exotic option so you have an option to buy an option you have a call to buy a call option so that that's what we have in an exotic option again again stressing on the same don't worry to remember all these names you you can go to the wikipedia page and read a little bit about it so that would be good enough then we have volatility trading that is trading on implied volatilities then we have something called copula which is uh, similar to correlation now uh, that's highly mathematical stuff it's like uh, uh, you are bringing many factors and you are finding out uh, a factor in single dimension something like that so just remember this name go through the wikipedia page even if you understand 5% that's good enough now wh wh why i'm focusing on this is that suppose you get an rc which talks about uh, the recession and the Im uh, and the reasons of the recession to be all these structured derivatives and credit default swaps and the mispricing of credit default swaps using copula so if you have heard this term before this gives you an inherent confidence to deal with those things then we have etfs they are structured financial products like uh, suppose a bank is selling you a call so a bank will make an index on writing of that call so whatever profit or loss it's happening uh, by selling a call it is uh, uh, the bank can recover that by selling an index or uh, an etf which is which has taken just a reverse position so there are etfs on writing a call writing a forward or writing any other derivative so that's again very interesting thing so uh, etfs uh, there could be some etf and what they can ask is like what is uh, the payoff of writing a call that's a very simple thing so don't get worried about the languages if you get some then there are some credit derivatives now you don't need to go in deeps you just need to under understand what credit default swap is so credit default swap is a protection and when the chances of default rises the credit default swap becomes expensive so you can buy a credit default swap when the chances of default is less you can sell it when the chances of default is high then there is interest rate swap fixed versus floating you you need to uh, go through the credit default swap of european nation and greek and spain and suppose the pricing went down of credit default swap and they might give you four options and s and you are required to pick out one of uh, those options so one pricing would be like uh, uh, something good happened or uh, they were given loan or they took austerity measures so if something positive happens then cds are going to fall something like that okay then there are there are some indexes of cds like emerging nation index for cds or bond market index of cds so if there is a structural change in all of these emerging market then the prices of these cds will go up and down okay so this was it about cds you just need to understand when the prices would go up and go down it's like you are sitting on a desk and some event happen and you need to now interpret like what's going up what's going down how would things go from there then there are some exotic derivatives uh there is an asian option look back option asian option generally takes an average look back option looks at some high or low barrier option and some of these things they would be defined on spot if if they are asked but just don't get afraid okay i'll skip this for this moment i have talked about implied volatility it's taken from black shoals it's ta it's computed using the market price we have volatility trading which means you can buy and sell volatility and uh, we have implied volatility for currency and equity okay then the last and one of the most important and the new 
instruments in finance are these ETFs which takes a reverse position on forward option they are used to distribute risk it's quite interesting to look at them there are ETFs on currency as well uh, currency futures as well currency uh, sorry currency forwards as well and things like that so you can if you think that uh, 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 like if you say that Chinese Yuan is not going to depreciate in spite of high interest rate then you can buy this ETF which is selling currency forward because uh, if if you look at the interest rate parity then you c you tend to say that okay China has got uh, an 8 or 9 percent interest whereas US has got 1 or 2 percent interest so in principle Chinese Yuan is going to depreciate but that's not happening because China is slowly trying to deregulate Yuan or you believe something so you can go and get these kind of ETFs so these are the structured product now you could be asked reason like why is uh, China's yuan not depreciating in spite of high interest rate like a possible reason could be uh, they have manipulated yuan and they are slowly uh, demanipulating it and making it uh, uh, according to the markets and something like that so if you believe in those ideas if you think uh, on those line or if you have some own theories in place you can get this ETF okay so to get more you can check out Bloomberg's website pricing uh, you can see the price of CDS you can study news on which prices affect CDS or which price affect which derivatives there is a book John C. Hull on derivatives you can check that out if your friend is giving CFFRM you can borrow his book alright friends that would bring me to the end of this session thank you for listening to me and if you have any doubts you can email me best of luck with your preparations bye bye